what's that religion called not, when not, they have more than one wife? What is that? I'm not talking. <laughs> I got three of them. It's Burrow, Mahomes, and, and Josh Allen, all right? Pete, uh, we got the soundbite for next pod right there. <laughs> Big love. <laughs> Oh, yeah. What's up, everybody? It's the Super Bowl edition. That's right. Chris Sims unbutton. Ahmed Fareed's here. It is our What the F Will Happen podcast. What the F did happen a little bit. We'll dive back into the championship game. Broken them all down. Got some thoughts moving forward. It's Super Bowl week, baby. Here we go. Super Bowl 57. Uh, Ahmed is not in Arizona. I am. So yeah. too bad. Yeah. And my voice still sucks. I apologize to everyone out Damn, there. Damn, you should. I have, I feel Gosh. bad. Like, we'll it's give you a full bad. refund. We'll give you a full refund. Oh, Pete says it's not that bad. No. Okay. Relax. What you, well, I said it was not that bad, and you didn't even care. But Pete says it, and you're like, oh, okay, fine. I think it's you're real. sitting next to me. You have to say that. Right. But Pete's not even. You close know to me. me. I don't have to say you're shit. Right. No, you're I right. mean, if you're you right. sounded like shit, I would love to tell everybody how bad right. you sound. It is Super Bowl week. We are, we are taping this a few days prior to when you're listening to it. Yes. So if there's something big that's happened, right. we're not going to talk about it because we don't know what happened yet. <laughs> that's right. So uh, that's the deal. But here's the deal. We're going to go back and look. Chris has done this already, looking at what happened in the championship games to yep. inform us on what might happen right. in the Super Bowl coming up in less than a week from now. Yes. Even when back to last year, 2021, oh week gosh. four matchup, took a little look at that not a ton to carry right, over there let's though. just start there all right because that's the last time they played yeah. against each other right was october 3rd 2021 high scoring game yes 42 to 30 chiefs won andy reed became the first coach to win 100 or more games with two teams that's amazing he did it against his former team right. so that was a big story even back then that was i forgot about that uh 471 yards of total offense for the kansas city chiefs and for jalen hurts a career high in passing yards for him, 387. So it was a crazy offensive game. Is there anything, anything that can carry over from that game more than a year ago? Not a ton. The teams are so di- – it's actually jarring how different the teams are. It really is. And like, it made me want to think of, like, have we ever seen, you know – I mean, I, I know we have, but – It's just the amount of different player, two playoff teams, one of which went to the AFC Championship last year. And you kind of look at their team now and go, damn, there's a whole lot of new players. Damn, you realize, man, actually, I look at the Chiefs and go, kind of amazing they went to the AFC Championship game last year. Because they are a more talented team, in my opinion, this year than they were last year. That's already some interesting insights. Well, I think the first thing you just throw out there, you go, okay, no, there's no Tyree Kill. That stinks, right? So he's not there. But it's a total new receiving core, so that's different. But the defensive side of the ball is where I think they're definitely more talented. You know, Nick Bolden being a year older and being a much better player, William Gay now being a starting linebacker next to him, right? Then, you know, the secondary, there's no Honey Badger. He's gone. There's no Daniel Sorensen. That's gone. There's no Mike Hughes who was starting a corner in that game. All those guys are gone. So it's a totally new secondary. Let alone George Karlaf, this is up on the D-line. We talked about the linebackers and all that. So there is, there's a lot of different pieces, and that goes to the Eagles as well. Eagles, two middle linebackers, are not, they don't, they're not there anymore. Their, their secondary is different. You know, with Chauncey Gardner-Johnson and, and Bur- uh, Bradbury being there. Hassan Reddick wasn't there, right? So even schematically, they were different on that side of the ball. That, that week four matchup from 2021-2, the Eagles were just kind of, you know, tip of the iceberg of this offense we're seeing. This, you know, what do you, whatever you want to call it, read option, quarterback run, base things around that type of stuff, type of offense. They were at the beginning phases of that. Uh, so it, there's not a ton. There's a few things we can look at, but I, I don't think this is one where we can go like, oh, well, these are these teams play exactly the same way the year before, and there's not that many different pieces. There's a lot of different pieces and a lot of changing parts. Eagles in that game, I noted here, we're missing yeah. four starters on the offensive line. Right, There's no Lane Johnson at right tackle, right? Dillard was starting at left tackle. And the right guard, who I can't remember who it was, was definitely not started. Kelsey and Landon, Dick, uh, yeah. Landon Dick, Dickerson, Dick, yeah, right? He, they were there. Uh, but, yeah, no Mylotta, no Lane Johnson. 
and the right guard was different. Different teams. Yeah. Different teams. So not a whole lot we can no take No A.J. Brown, right? Kind of a big That's deal. That's a big deal. I mean, kind of. It's a little bit of a big right. deal. So now the Eagles offense is different. They can run over most teams. Yeah. Um, but the 49ers did slow down the Eagles passing game last week. And so we're going to start with the Eagles offense. Chiefs defense, look at what advantages, disadvantages we might have there. So big picture, first of all, with that side of the ball, yeah. Eagles offense, Chiefs on defense in the Super Bowl, what do you think is the biggest advantage that the Chiefs offense will have in that game? Where can they exploit? Chiefs offense, Eagles defense, or other way Eagles, around? I was going to say, okay, Eagles I was like, maybe I wasn't hearing you around. Eagles offense, right. right, Eagles offense. Chiefs what is D. The, Chiefs D, what is the biggest advantage that they may have over the Chiefs. I, I don't think it's a groundbreaking statement here. Again, it, it still all goes back to one thing with them. It, it's their line. I mean, it's this is one of the biggest, most overpowering lines uh, I've ever seen. It's not, you know, they're, they're – and they have a little bit of everything, you know. So that's where – a little bit of everything, I mean, too, in the fact that, like, scheme versatility – and like we talk about where, you know, sometimes during the year we were like, hey, you, you can't be right with the Eagles, right? You, know, you do this and then they do that and you do that and then they do this. And it's just like they got to answer for everything. You know, they had some d like dull moments right against the 49ers the other day. 49ers did some different things up front that I think took them a little bit to go, oh, wait, wait, we can't run the plays we thought we were going to run. We got to go to the next group. And then they get to the right run plays. They go, well, that that blocking scheme makes more sense for how the liners are lined up. Now, uh-oh, advantage Eagles. And then when you kind of saw late mid-second quarter when they started to run the ball a little bit more consistently where you started to go, damn, that was a, kind of a big hole. Ooh. They they got to the right run plays as far as what the defenses were telling them to do. Hmm. So that is where you have to stop them. Now, you know, the, the, the Chiefs, of course, are not as good as the 49ers on the defensive side of the ball. But the Chiefs do have size up front. They have a blue chip player that's arguably better than anybody the Niners have. I mean, Chris Jones, Nick Bosa, whatever, uh, those are you know start, all pro starting defense alignment. That's all I'm trying to say there. And Chris Jones being in the middle actually might affect more plays in this type of game than maybe a Nick Bosa can, hmm. not to say or not trying to discredit that. Two athletic linebackers, right, just like the 49ers. I think that's a big thing too, because again, you, you know, linebackers need to be like, "Hey, I'm sitting here. Oh, wait, now I got to get outside and stop Jalen Hurts because he's kept the ball, right?" So there's got you got to have speed at that position, and then there's some creativity on that side of the ball as far as spags. One thing I did see that carried over from Week Four was some of the quarterback design runs. He did some stuff that we've been talking about a lot lately, some calculated risks, some run blitz. You can't fill all these gaps up perfectly sometimes with how the Eagles line up. So you got to just go, we're not going to let them block us the way they want to draw it up on the board. We're going to do some different stuff, and we're going to blitz this guy off the edge and have people slant this way or that way and just try to mess up their thinking and their execution. Because if you just line up the same way, play after play, they're going to win the battle. Mm. They're going to. They're, they're too good on that way. So that would still be the number one thing I look at. I hope – I don't mean to be boring with that answer, but I think it's just the reality of it. I do want to get into the run game yeah. and, and what they might be able to do. Yeah. But Quentin Freeman has a question for you. Long, long time Eagles fan here. How did the 49ers slow down the Eagles passing game, or did Hurts not read the throws over the middle? Hurts didn't play great. I think that would be the first thing yeah. I would say. It was not yeah. his best game. He didn't throw the ball great. It's hard for me to sit there and think that Jalen Hurts is 100% with his shoulder, right? You know, the, the, the ball did not look like it's popping out of his hands with the same authority or the same spin that I've seen throughout the year. Sure. So I got to think there's still something there, too. Then, you know, I think also the 49ers, they do a good job of kind of the things. You know, they played more man in this game. Then I've seen them play, and they did a pretty good job. And maybe it's where I didn't give them enough credit. Because, see, here, here's where it becomes a little interesting, and this is another thing where I think the Chiefs are better man-to-man -man than the 49ers, right? I think they have better true cover guys. And here's one thing that I kind of played in the 49ers' favor. We, we've hit on this a little. You know, the Eagles' passing attack is not complex. It's, it's pretty simple in what it does. But it's effective because he makes the right read and they make throw and they have talent. And because the defense always has to play something to, oh, crap, we got to stop the run, right? 
you don't have to be overly creative. You can just go, hey, these basic plays work because they schematically are in a bind when you're trying to stop the run and do that. Right. Right. So um, the 49ers got into a little bit like we talked about last week leading up to the game. They're good at playing zones. They did a good job of trying to keep two safeties back as much as they can. Yeah, guys were fast fill. And then also like that Jimmy Ward spot, that nickelback spot, right? Yeah, you think that that position and that player is crucial in stopping the Eagles. Crucial. Why? Like he's the guy that can be, hey, wait, I'm in coverage. It's not a great look for you in coverage. Oh, wait, hey, I'm in the run box. See, it's not that great for you to run the ball either. You know, but that's got to be a special player, one that's explosive and smart to read the plays the right way. And then, two, it better be a good damn tackler. And Jimmy Ward's a, he's a safety, really. He's like a safety who can play nickelback, right? And that's where I look at the, the, the Chiefs, you know, where Legereus Sneed mobs in, and he's, he's a willing tackler. But there's more than just tackling in this one. You might have to take some, some lead blockers, right, lower your shoulder, blow up some plays, pulling guards, stuff like that, to where – I don't, and then coming off a concussion, I don't know if I want him in that spot. Sure, if it's man to man and we got to cover a receiver, I want him. But if you're going to try to play zones and all that, I, I think the Kansas City's got to bring in a third safety here. That would be my thing, right? Whether they want to put, uh, it's Brian Cook, right? The safety from Cincinnati rookie, right? Number six. I, yeah. I always forget it. It's B. Cook. I know that. But whether they want to put him down there in some of those situations. Right to where he could be like, hey, I'm covering the slot and helping out in zone, but I'm I'm fast fill here in the run. You know, one of the three safeties has to be down there. Maybe you keep him back and you put a Justin Reed or a Juan Thornhill down there. But I do think it has to be someone other than your normal nickel cover guy all the time to help out with that extra presence in the run game. Right, because the run game, if the Eagles can run the ball effectively it's on just, the Chiefs, it's just deep shit. It's just hard. It, it's, you know, again, it's then it becomes, oh, wait, now we do have to blitz and we're having to play too much man to man and they're going to find a pick play or just throw. He's a great deep ball thrower, go route, jump ball, whatever. They're going to get to that aspect. And, you know, of course, they're good at pass protecting and they'll keep a line. I mean, they'll keep an extra guy in the block to take shots down the field. So, yeah, if the run game gets out of hand, that's when. They got you, you know, by the kahunas a little bit. So here's the million-dollar question, yeah. then, and it comes from David Linsmeyer. says, can the Chiefs' front seven hold up against the Eagles' offensive line in the run game? Seemed like the Eagles were able to run against a stout 49ers' front seven. They, they, yeah, you know, I, they ran solid. I mean, they, you know, I don't— Wasn't as good as we've seen. Exactly right. And I don't know if it would have been as good as it was if the 49ers just had an offense, if they had a quarterback that could throw the ball, right? Yeah. I mean, there was – again, that was, this is our conversation we have a lot, right, where it's like, you know, this defense isn't really as bad as their ranking. It's just that every fourth play they're back on the field because their offense stinks, and they wear down. You, th- you thought in the second half that defense There was a down. little wearing down and then also a little bit of, like – you know, nothing new I'm telling you. They knew that defense had to win the game. So they started to call some defenses to go, like, we got to make a play, right? And it backfired on them. I don't think they would call those plays if it was a one, two score game still. But it was 28 to seven, and they were like, we got to, like, blitz and do this and hopefully get a fumble, or we're definitely going to lose. So that led to the Eagles having some advantages on things as well. Um, overall, I was encouraged by what they You're not going to stop the Eagles' running game. You're not. It's just can you limit how badly it gashes you? To me, if you stop them like 150 or below, you, you've actually, to me, you've done some good things and you have a fighting chance. When they start to get up to the 200 range and all that, and then I want to go, uh, you're screwed. And it's going to be 500 yards of total offense, and they're going to be big plays everywhere. So what techniques might they use? Tyler Econ says NFL Poet Laureate Ahmed. Thank you for that, Mm -hmm. Tyler. And NFL quarterback whisperer Chris, what do the Chiefs do when playing a team that runs the ball as well as much as the Eagles? Can they play basty? Have they been forced into making adjustments like adding personnel, nose tackle, et cetera? Yeah. So have you seen that in the past, like what the Chiefs do against a good running team? Definitely. They're going to play some five-man front. You know, we've seen them do this against the Tennessee Titans, right? This is where again, I don't don't I, I just I wouldn't count this Chiefs D out because of the coaching and we've talked about this before, right? They are 
We all know it's Mahomes and all that. They have shown they can be physical when they need to be, right? I mean, there was last week. We can take into that example. Oh, the Bengals blocked the Bills. They ran on the Bills. Chiefs were like, F- you. We're going to get to the quarterback, and we're going to stop your run. They did it. We've seen them do it. We've talked about the Titans games in the past. The 49ers in the Super Bowl had a hard time running the ball. So I do believe they'll rise to the challenge, and he'll have – the right schematical things to pose a challenge to this offense. They'll play some of the bare front that we talked about. And listen, they got big people. They could put in, you know, they put in Nandi, Chris Jones, uh, you know, let's say Brandon Williams or one of the other big guys they got. And now you got Carl Aftis and, you know, uh, Frank Clark or even Mike Dana, who was awesome in the football game that we need to give love yeah, from last why, week. What did you see from Mike Dana? Well, he's just – he's got a little bit of a – he's he's one of those pieces you need for a game like this where you go, oh, run game, he'll be awesome at defense end. He's a bigger guy. He's strong. He's going to play good there. But then, oh, wait, pass game, he's got kind of the strength to play D-tackle and win against those guys, but mm. then also be an athletic match, mismatch for them, right? So, you know – I think they got enough depth and size to at least not get steamrolled here. Now, even within saying that, they're going to have to take some chances. And like we've talked about in weeks past, where we talked about the Chiefs last week, and they did this. Change coverages. you got to give different looks. You can't just let Joe Burrow go, oh, it's this coverage, boom, completion. Oh, it's that coverage, boom, completion. Both interceptions came off of exotic looks. A lot of their sacks came off of doing the things we talked about on social media in the pod last week. Well, you got to do that again to the Eagles, but in a little different way, right? One, sure, you want to run blitz a little bit. You want to play the five-man fronts. To me, too, the, the other aspect of this, and like what we were just talking about with the 49ers, you got to play some different fronts. If it's a four-man front, just don't line up in the same four-man front a few plays in a row. Because like we were talking about with Burrow, he'll get to the right plays. Sirianni and Hurts will get to the right plays in the run game if you start to be predictable in how you line up. And that's, to me, another angle you can do, too. you got to change. You can't play shade nose and a three technique. Shade nose and a three technique. It's got to be some double three technique, some both head up on the guards, right, to where they can't already, oh, hey, we, let's, let's, let's get to this run play so we can get the double team here and then get up to the second level and mess up some of the rules with some of those plays. Create some uncertainty and in that offensive line. Uncertainty with the offensive line rather than the pass game with Burrow in that matchup. That's what Kansas City's going to have to do here. If the Eagles – are going to dominate the Chiefs. Right. What does that look like? That just looks like they run the ball. That offensive line dominates that defensive line, and it comes through the running game, and then they can play off that running game with the passing game, the RPO game. Right. They're just going to dominate the run game, pulling guards, pulling Kelsey. Oh, gosh. Oh, here comes the pulling guard. we got to get over there and stop it. Oh, what? Jalen Hurts kept it off the edge now. Shit. They pulled the guard and made it look like the run to the right, but he's keeping it off. And and it's just it, the floodgates will open. And then it's going to be, oh, gosh, he fakes it. Or he even fakes his quarterback runner. Now he drops back. And now was A.J. Brown's going across the middle, right? That, that would be the issue, that, that, at least to me. Now, hopefully the Chiefs can find – the Chiefs, like I said, I think they can match up man-to-man maybe better than the 49ers. Sure. I do. I think they have more physical, gifted cover cover men. But I would also say with that, I hope they can find, like we were talking about with the 49ers, a way to play some zones as well and find ways to like, hey, we're playing pass coverage, but we're going to be quick to help out with the run. I think that's important as well. What always can make it easier on your defensive secondary is if you get a little bit of a pass rush. Right. Addy M27 goes, hey, Sims, love the pot as always. How do you think the Chiefs' pass rush on the edge will fare versus the Eagles' tackles? Feel like Jordan Mailata and Lane uh-huh. Johnson should be able to win those battles versus Frank Clark and George Karlaftis. I would agree with you. I, I totally would agree with you there. That's, um, who was that? At, how'd you say his name? Addy M. At Addy M. Yeah, 27. Uh, I, I, I feel like that's an advantage for the Eagles, definitely. Um. Nick Bosa pushed Lane Johnson back as much as I've ever seen anybody push any okay. him back, right? But I don't they don't have a Nick Bosa. They don't have that. So, you know, it's not gonna they're not gonna win the game with four man rush. We're actually just beating you man to man, right? That's not like like Giants beating the Patriots in two thousand seven. No. They're gonna have to do this more of, hey, yeah, four man, you gotta be pretty good, but 
defensive coordinator Spags is going to have to find out some ways to, you know, help it out a little bit too. Create some mismatches, make them think this guy's blitz and he dropped out. Wait, we sent the protection here and now we're kind of screwed over here, right? That that's there's going to have to be that. Spags is going to have to earn his money. This is going to be a challenge in that in that department, and and I'm excited to see what he can do. I will say in that first mat or that matchup last year. He did do some of that run game blitz like I was talking about that I do think caused a few problems, and, and the Eagles did not break the dam running the ball against them. We've talked about the defensive tackles, right. the edge, right. some of the secondary. Yeah, How important will those linebackers be, Nick Bolton, Willie Gay? They're, they're, they're to me, the key, right? That's, that's the that's, – those guys are the, the guys that go, oh, Jalen Hurts kept it around the edge. It's a 40-yard gain or it's just a four-yard gain. It's going to be on them, you know. And, then, yeah, they're going to be asked to do, like, a little bit of double duty, I think, like what we talked about with, like, Fred Warner last week. Like, hey, kind of hang in the A-gap, and then, you know, if you kind of see it close up, we need you to get around the edge to help if Jalen Hurts keeps the ball around there. They're super athletic. They, I, they're the kind of group that athletically can do it. They popped in that Bengals game they, for you. They, they do. They pop big time. In the, they played that game like the 49ers linebackers always play. And, and we've hit on this before where it's just they didn't like go, oh, there's my gap. Let me just stay in my gap. They were like, no, there's the gap. F- run through it and go right in the backfield. Go. More than likely, the running back's going to be running through it. He's seeing that same gap. So just run through. And even if he's not in the gap, now he's, oh, wait, i got to stop and redirect, and now other guys get there. Right? They were phenomenal in the football game. They really were. And I, I think they're an underrated duo, in my opinion. Um, Mike Dana, Bolton. All these guys are kind of – It's it, it'll be interesting to see like, who steps up, who's the name that makes a play that maybe we're not thinking about right now, or actually we are, on Monday before uh, the Super Bowl comes up here. Uh, I, th- I feel like there's a couple more things here on this side of the ball. Yeah. Oh, this is it. Yeah. Um, one point that you think is uh, should be a point of emphasis yeah. for the Chiefs on defense right. is getting their hands up into maybe some of the passing lanes Definitely. for Jalen Hurts. Why, why did you note that? Well – when you break down the Eagles, there's no in between, right? There's no in between throws. It's either a five yard stick route, a hitch route, or slant route, or we just throw a go route down the middle of the field, right? And, you know, a lot of the times you can't get there. Like we've talked about with two in the Dolphins, they kind of fake a run, right? And so everybody's kind of like going, oh, wait, I got to stop the run. And then he has the ball, and you're like, oh, shit, now I got to pat a pass rush, right? And it's hard to kind of restart and actually get to the quarterback that way. Well, you know, you got to have some eyes and some vision in this kind of game because he's going to do that. And it's going to be A.J. Brown here. Do that, and there's Dallas Goddard there. So D, you got to ask your D lineman to have great disciplined eyes in this game. Hey, he doesn't keep the ball. You know you're not going to get there. Get hands up in the passing lane. He has a very slow release. It's a long, elongated release. You can see it. And that, to me, is one way where you can compound – you know, or at least take a little bit of edge off of everything they do and give them some some issues there. Uh, so that's big. That's definitely big. Stopping those one-on-one deep balls. That's going to be a big thing. That seems like the last thing that we haven't talked about on that side of the ball that right. could wreck this game for the Chiefs defense. Definitely. Now they got, you know, like we saw last week, it, like they're not outclassed by anybody. I'm not saying they're going to make every play, but like even on T. Higgins, jump ball, touchdown, right? Like the Chiefs were there. It wasn't like, whoa, T. Higgins just burned him and he was gone. You know, even Jamar Chase posed down the middle of the field, right? They were there. Yeah. He just made a great play. Yeah, their ball skills were yeah. up to par. Yeah, exactly two. right. Exactly. You know, but so there, I have a hard time thinking like A.J. Brown's just going to blow by them. It's just going to be, can they make the play to knock the ball down or do that or tip the ball up in the air so a friend can get an interception or whatever? But, hey, I will say, and the 49ers showed this too, obvious passing situations, if you can get, you know, Philadelphia to where you can get some third and longs on that, you can give them, you again, like I've told you, it's not a – it's not an overly like, oh, wow, these plays are amazing. They're, it's it's kind of just, hey, they do it with their players. They execute. He makes the right read and throw, and that's it. But, you know, I, I do think that's a point where that could be an advantage for them, and especially from what I saw last week and them telling, willing to take tactical chances and double guys and do coverages and, oh, it's, you know, the way they, they varied things and double chase in big moments and all that. 
you know, I think that's where Spags and the, the Chiefs will have an advantage if they can get the Eagles in those positions. They got a lot of tricks, that defense for they the do. Chiefs. And I think you noted one of the more interesting ones on the first interception by Joe Burrow because it's almost a throwback to something they maybe had seen someone else do or they did earlier right I, I think this was one of the more interesting points that you made so you just, like if you one? could if you could just go back to that first interception yeah. by joe burrow and what made it so interesting to you yeah well like just both interceptions were exotic defenses defenses where you just go these aren't normal these are like game plan specific because they're worried about these guys and are where they're lined up they know they like the throat of these guys in this position so you know they got there and um i believe that was a third down right i think i wrote it down let me just make sure i got this in my my notes here but um yeah, it's a third and two, right? So so they're worried about, hey, four or five-yard pass just to get the first down. Maybe could even run, right? So they got kind of people at the line of scrimmage, and so they're ready to take away some of that. But they basically, they basically played like no safety in the middle of the field, right? So it looked like it was going to be like, hey, it's just man-to-man -man with a safety deep in the middle, right? And as he's blue 40, I blue 45, it starts to come, and you're going, whoa, this safety's – like, he's coming over here to, to double. He's in a double chase, right? So they doubled chase, and then they doubled Irwin, which I know people are going to go, why would they double Irwin? It's not about the player. It's about the position. They, I'm sure they had things where go, wait, Chase, we know he likes to throw him. And then they like to throw. There's three receivers on the other side. They like to throw to the inside three of the receivers in these big moments, right? I would guarantee there was a breakdown of that. So they doubled both of those guys with no safety in the middle of the field. And, of course, you know, he throws it up. He's got a little pressure, right? And he – and and, uh, and and T. Higgins doesn't know where to break, right? I, I, I butchered that for a second. So Chase is doubled. Irwin's doubled. Higgins is the middle of the three receivers. He's man-to-man. -man, but now they've pressured, doubled – and he's got to throw it before he wants to, but because of that pressure and the odd look, T. Higgins didn't know whether to go inside or outside. Joe threw it inside. T. Higgins went outside. Interception. I'm just saying those are the calculated chances. I didn't. I bumbled that at the end there, but, but I finally got to it. Where had you seen that before? Oh, that's where I was trying to get to. The Chiefs, they had this done to them in the 2018 AFC Championship game by the Patriots. The game where they couldn't score in the first half, if everybody remembers. I think the Patriots went in 14 nothing, And it was literally like I had never seen it where I went, whoa, they're making it look like single safety, but the single safety is actually doubling Tyree Kill every play. And there's no safety in the middle of the field. And it took the Chiefs a while to fi figure it out and go, wait, what the hell are they doing? What are they playing here? Um, so, yeah, they kind of gave it back to somebody else and a little payback. Keep your eye out for that. Throwbacks yeah. to football of well, bygone days. The second interception, you saw that too, right? It was throw it up to T. Higgins. He was doubled. One guy got his hand on it. The other guy that was there doubled him. He, he makes the play. So um, that, that, that to me is going to have to be a part. And that's to me where Spags is special and where they can give the Eagles problems. But can they keep the Eagles in third and five plus? That's the that's key. That's another key. Right. All right. So I think we've exhausted that side of the ball. Okay. So let's flip things so. over to the Chiefs offense versus the Eagles defense. We'll kind of start looking more closely at the Chiefs offense here. And we'll start it the same way we did the last one. What is the biggest potential advantage that Patrick Mahomes and that offense, Travis Kelsey, has over a very good Eagles defense? How can they exploit them? All right. I, I think, I mean, the Eagles' defense is, is really good. Right. I think the, the first thing I'm going to look at is just that I think this is, this is one of the few teams all year, or at least the second half of the year, where I go, the Eagles aren't necessarily going to run over this group pass protecting. They're not just going to oh, – like, he's going to have some time to throw every now and then. That's been the biggest advantage the Eagles have had on basically every team they've played all year. No doubt about it. And then they're creative with their pressures off of that. And to me, that's a little bit where, you know, evens the scales out. There's no question the Eagles are the better team in this matchup. 
I'm not saying that's by a huge matchup, but the Eagles are better. If we went through position by position like we like to do a lot, we're going to take the Eagles, a lot more Eagles than the Chiefs. There's no disrespect there. The Chiefs are still awesome, right? This is where a great quarterback comes into play because I would have told you in 2019 that 49ers were definitely better than the Chiefs, but that f***ing red wearing one and five, he tips the scales in one direction in a hurry, and all of a sudden you go, damn, it seems like that team in red's better. I don't know. And it's like, no, he's just f***ing awesome, all right? But – they're better than, I think, throughout as a full team, maybe than that 2019 team. Their all line, I think, is definitely better. Okay, I'll say that. And I do think with their all line, their ability to pass protect, and then two weeks with Andy Reid hmm. figuring out how to block all the stuff, I think is going to be huge in this football game, at least for the Chiefs to, you know, even the scales here a little bit, where that's usually a huge advantage. Like, they need to figure out, like, I can't leave Tyler Croft on Hassan Reddick on a third down, right? And then have my quarterback's elbow break and we lose the game, right? That I, I bet you that doesn't happen in this game. I bet you they're going to go back and go, wait, wait, we're going to find it to get our big people on their big people and our tight ends and backs will block their safeties and linebackers when they blitz. But they're not going to be blocking one of the five best pass rushers in football with Travis Kelsey. I can promise you that. So that, to me, is one area that does give the Chiefs a legitimate fighting chance and the fact that you can look at it and go, the Eagles D-line isn't going to ruin this game against this crew here. Yeah. And so that, uh, I think, is the big biggest advantage but there's no advantage to where i go oh my gosh if the eagles don't do this they're screwed right kind of like we said on the other side yeah i think there's more the chiefs have to do in this matchup than the eagles have to do in this matchup what do you think the chiefs do and we don't know exactly how mobile patrick mahomes will be but yeah. we have to assume it'll be better than what we saw against the bengals i would think so but you noted in your notes that the Chiefs did do some things to try to protect him a little bit more than maybe they would have if he was completely healthy. Definitely. The more max protection, more keep a tight end, keep two tight ends in. Yeah. Do you right? think they'll keep I think doing they'll, that in the I Super think Bowl? they'll do it a little bit. I do. I think you got to have some plays like that where you just go, hey, wait, wait, let's just keep some guys in and block and make not everybody have to think and all that and not make Mahomes have to think about who's protected so he can just drop back and assess what's going on downfield, feel comfortable and be aggressive. I still think they need to do that more. You know, they had two big pass plays down the field of Valdez scaling where they were along those lines. It's something that is missing in their, their offense and they're going to get those opportunities. Again, I think the Eagles defense and the way they play – some of these, they're going to look at it in film and go, wait, yeah, we like to throw this eight yard play over here, but man, it's going to be tough. Like, we got to, these guys are daring us to throw the ball by them. We got to throw it by them. They dare you at times. So that's where I do think that's part of the game plan, let alone some of the sprint outs that you saw, right? Like the touchdown on fourth down, and there was a few other sprint outs where they kept people in. Hey, just roll out. We're going to have two or three guys here, right? Gives the offensive line kind of a playoff to a degree, makes him feel good, gives it a different look, boom, he's in completion, blah, blah, blah. I, I guess that that would be uh, – I definitely would think a part of it. You know, the the health of the Chiefs will be a huge story yeah. all week long leading up to the Super Bowl, and I don't know if we made a big enough deal about it in the championship games yeah. and how difficult the Chiefs had it because I was looking at the snap count for the game. Juju played 45% of the snaps – Marcus Kemp played 32% of the snaps for the Chiefs. Right. Wide receiver, if in case you're not familiar with Marcus Kemp, who played 10 snaps all year long and then played 22 in that game. Mecole Hardman, 22% of the snap. Uh, Canarius Tony, 6% of the snaps. And that one might be the biggest one for the Chiefs coming up in this game. Agreed. Agreed. I, I'm glad you led me down that road. Um, of course, they got to be healthy up there. You know, not that all of them got to be healthy. Not every one of them, but they need at least three or four of them to be healthy. Yeah. It can't be what we saw. That, again, we we, we kind of got away from that conversation. I mean, that was a, that's again what was amazing about the other night. They were dropping like flies. They had guys in the game where you're going, "Are you kidding me? They got to do it with this group against this defense? Yeah, three tight ends at yeah, times." Yeah, right? I know. It's just it's unbelievable. So, um, yeah, they certainly it, it, and. I would think part of the line kind of swaying back to the Chiefs a little bit is, uh, you know, Vegas is hearing some good reports about the health. I don't think any of their injuries are true serious ones. Tony is the one I am concerned about. 
He jammed his ankle in there pretty good. He rolled it the traditional way, right? He was trying to make a cut, and it rolled on him. But he, to me, and I know this is what stinks about that game last week, he was going to be the X factor. Hmm. He was going to be the guy, almost like Odell against the Bengals in the Super Bowl, where you went, "Uh uh-oh, the Bengals got answers for everything, but they can't quite not with this guy here at this spot. Now they're in a tough spot. And to me, it looked like he was going to be a focal point of the game plan. Um, they need him. They do. You know, again, because the Eagles are going to play five man fronts. They're going to do that. You know, they're going to pressure you at times. They're going to play man to man and try to smother you that way. And he is by far their most dangerous guy in that department. He is the one guy that can get by, jump, jam coverage, and explode by you. And you're like, oh shit, he's gone. I'm in trouble. You know, he's definitely their best weapon in that department. Uh, yeah, they need those guys you know, to be healthy. There, there's, there's no question about that. MVS, a deep ball threat for them as well. Played a huge part in the game against the Bengals. Compass Traveler says to you, can you explain a little bit about defensive rules on the MVS touchdown Ooh. in the championship game? I feel like Jesse Bates took the wrong decision, leaving Mike Hilton exposed. Yeah, all Thanks. right. So th- this, is a, this is a very good conversation here. And um, it's a good if the Eagles are watching the tape and figuring out how to prevent this from happening to them. Well, it's a good it's a good play. And I'm I'm actually going to try to bring it up here. You know how I like to do with you. And so we can watch it together. All right. So so I'll bring it up. I'll get to it here in a second. So you and I can watch it together while you will explain it. Just have to. But but no, it's a really good question by our listener here. And the, the biggest thing, too, you know, one is it's not Jesse Bates's fault. That's that's the first thing I want to tell you, okay? So, it's a good play that Kansas City runs. Here's the play. I'm bringing it up, all right? So, Ahmed, you could see. It's a four-man front, right? They're playing they're playing man-to-man. They're doubling Kelsey on the top of the screen. See that, right? So, they yep. got two guys on him, right? Everybody else is man-to-man. Valdez Scantling's going to run the outside post who Mike Hilton's on. He's eventually going to score the touchdown, right? You see Sky Moore is going to run the inside post, right? So there's a free safety in the middle of the field. Look at Jesse Bates' eyes, right? You see him looking up this guy, right? Because he's going, wait, it's the Chiefs. We, we, Ahmed and Chris talk about it all year. you got to defend crossers. when they. Uh, so I've been listening to the pod, and I'm ready for the crossers, right? So here he is. He's ready for the crosser. Now, when he crosses, this is something the Bengals do on a regular basis. He, now... Cam Taylor Britt, he's got to he's got to take over Jesse Bates's job. So when he gets to this point right here, as he's starting to cross the hash, Cam Taylor Britt's got to go. Wait, Jesse Bates is there. He's going to cut him off. I need to fall back and be right here. And really, if he drops off right here, he's going to be right in the lane of where Mahomes is throwing. So, again, I wish we could all see this on yeah. film. I think we might put it on social a little later. Let's do that. Right? But you can kind of see it from this angle, too. The end zone is like right here he's got to be falling off to where he'd be in this area, and he'd be in the general area. I don't know if he breaks it up, but it would have been a little cloudier for Mahomes. But in my assessment there, yes, that was Cam Taylor Britt not coming off in, in quite enough of a hurry. Lip smackling good on the same lines of MVS. How much after the Chiefs uh, – how much after the Chiefs – to lean on MVS. I think he means how much are the Chiefs yeah. going to lean on MVS? Yeah. What can they scheme up with him and the screen game to mitigate that pass? Rush? Yeah. The, the, this this is uh, screen game will be crucial as we've talked about. Even when they played them last year and the early in the year, some of the wide receiver screen game was big. Um, um, as we assessed a minute ago. Yes. I think with Tony and MVS, those are guys where he's like, you, you can't let them go, oh, Bradbury and Slayer bump man to man for the 12th play in a row. You got f- Patrick Mahomes and you're the Kansas City Chiefs. If you don't attack their ass and throw the ball down the field on that, then damn, I'll be mad at you. I will. So th- it's that, that. And, you know, it's, it's, I don't even know if it necessarily needs a lot of scheming there. Now, there was something else I was going to say off of that. Oh, here's the other element that I don't know and I'm interested by. And again, we hit on this. this, The Eagles, they weren't the same in that matchup last year. I mean, Josh Sweat wasn't a thing yet. Now he's one of the better pass rushers in football. Hassan Reddick wasn't there, right? The two middle linebackers, uh, they're different now. They're not. Last year, I think it was Singleton and God, I can't even remember the other guy's name. Uh, but either way, you know, now it's it's T.J. Edwards and because you're white, they're damn good players. So it's just a different look altogether. But like Fletcher Cox and Hargrave were there, 
right? Brandon Graham was there. Like, I the Chiefs ran the ball mm. on the Eagles. And we know this has been a little issue with the Eagles. And I I do think there's something to be had there. I don't the Eagles are not as good at stopping the run as the Bengals are. That's so what, that's what I wanted to say there. Yeah, is Alex Gymnast is right. gonna lead you down where you were already leading yourself. Okay. But he goes, Isaiah Pacheco couldn't get going. Was that due to the Bengals D line or the Chiefs O line? No, it was more the Bengals D line. Okay. That Bengals D line's real. They really are. You know, and and you know, you've we you've heard we've talked about DJ Reader a lot over the last two years. Yes. He's premier run stopping D tackle in football. The Eagles don't have a run stopping D tackle like him. No. And I, listen, I Fletcher Cox, I love him. I mean, he's an all time Chris Sims Hall of Famer, right? I think he is a Hall of Famer, like period. But at this point of his career, no, he's not that anymore. Hargrave, like big body, but actually a better interior pass rusher than run stopper, in my opinion. So I, there, this, yeah, I think there could be some opportunities here, again, and I think that's where it could be interesting too, because this is where the Eagles, who, you know, I would sure against Mahomes would probably go. I'd rather not play five man fronts the whole as much as we usually do against him, hmm. right? I'd rather have that one extra guy with us to spy him or just drop in the zone here or double that guy, right? That's what you r- realistically like. But I, I, if they run the ball with a little success, I think that could scare Philly, and then that can give them some looks of going, yeah, okay, we got a pass protect against these five guys, but we got one less guy to worry about in passing lanes down the field, and that's where it could become dangerous. There was something you noted yeah. in your film review that I had seen on Twitter a couple of days prior. Okay. Damn. Somebody Actually, beat me. 49ers game. You're both thinking the same way. This mm-hmm. is good. It was a very smart person on Twitter uh, about motion. And the Eagles' defense dealing with the, the pre-snap motion and maybe shifts and motion at the snap. Right. Uh, that's given them trouble throughout the year. Is that something that the Chiefs can exploit? They do a bit of that. Of course, they always have during Andy Reid's time there. Yeah. Is, is that – could that be an advantage for the Chiefs in I this game? I think it can be. I, I mean, that's where the Chiefs could get very creative. And because the Eagles, which, you know – well documented we we kind of like dissected them last year we're like yeah you're too simple everybody's tearing you apart and jonathan gannon heard that and made corrections and has made them a more dangerous defense but within that too you know usually what that means is yeah you know hey we're we're in this call when they're in this formation but wait but they motioned over to this and they do different stuff so i don't want to be in that call anymore we're going to switch to this other defense that we've packaged with this right and that's where, you know, in the 49er game and other games throughout the year, yeah, I've seen it to where there's there's communication and people are, like, still talking and you're like, wait, the ball snap, guys. Like, you got to go get the guy with the ball here. Like, you're still talking or you're still trying to figure out the rules. And that, to me, is without a doubt with a defense that does as much as they do and, again, you know they're physically gifted – those are the little things you got to do in this game just to hopefully slow them down just a little bit or get them talking just a little bit to give yourself an advantage. And I think that that's where, again, two weeks with Andy and figuring some of those things out, I think will come in, in handy. I, if this was one week preparation, I go, Eagles are going to win the game. It's their, their Super Bowl champs. Uh, just, I'll tell you that right now. If it was one week, I'd go, but two weeks, the extra time. And all of that, and then of course them beginning to get healthy, uh, it, it does. I, I think sways it to Kansas City. Kansas City's the team that needs more time in this matchup. Mm-hmm. They're the ones that's going to have to, I think, go outside the box a little bit more from what they normally do, than vice versa. So scheming up open receivers is something that the Chiefs have done. Andy Reid has done. Yeah. They did it at times in the the Bengals game in the championship game, but usually when the receivers open. They'll make those plays. You did notice a few times where, you know, the Chiefs, I don't know if it's the ankle or whatever, like Patrick Mahomes, they, they were messing up some plays, and you noted in your notes, you go, they, they, they won't be able to do this in the Super Bowl and still win. No, like they're up 13-3. to three. Joe Burrow just throws the interception. Like he's got Sky Moore running a shallow cross. There would be an eight-yard gain at least for an easier field goal. He missed the throw. Like he can't do that shit in this game. You can't do it. You're not going to win the Super Bowl if you miss that. You got to go up 16 to three there or 20 to three, right? 
You know, that, that that would be the big thing. Or think about later later in the game. He missed a curl route one time to Sky Moore because I don't think he could really push with his back leg at some moments. So he was kind of on the front leg. He kind of threw it in the ground, if you remember, and Sky Moore tried to dive and catch it. He had the third and eight. Um, the maybe the, the drive before the last drive of the game where he, they got the game-winning field goal. He's got the Marquez Valdez Scantling going over the middle. I mean, it's going to be a big play, and he throws it behind him in completion. They got to punt the ball back. So those are like they're going to get some of those. They got to be maximized. Like yeah, again, the Eagles are the better team. They got to hit those plays, make the big plays. You know, I I have faith in this kind of moment that Mahomes will be on his A game and f- feeling healthier. But yeah, they, they can't miss those opportunities. If the Eagles' defense is going to win this matchup, what's the most likely way that happens? That the Chiefs' offensive line, as good as it is, can't slow down the pass rush of the Eagles. Is that it? I, I think the thing I will look at is if if the Eagles like early in the game are in their four man front and they're winning that way, I you know the game's over. They're not gonna they're not gonna win. They might make it close or whatever, but they're not gonna win. If it has to go into, oh wait, it's four man front and he's got time and he's kind of picking them apart. And oh shit, here goes Pacheco up the middle. Then I'm gonna go, this game's gonna be interesting. Eagles are better, but <laughs> Chiefs are the Chiefs and they got fifteen at quarterback and he's gonna make this thing interesting. Because now, oh, now they're in the five-man front and they're, the coverage is like we talked about. That becomes scarier. Five-man front, the screen game becomes scarier, right? Five-man front, oh, he escaped out of the pass rush and now he's outside and you got one less guy in coverage, right? That's to me where, and again, maybe I'll come back with more thoughts of this as the week goes on here and I get to digest it a little bit more, but that's, that's my first initial thought. This is something you've mentioned a couple times now, the talent advantage for the Eagles. Let's, let's hammer it home a little bit uh, farther. Yeah. Vince Arganetto says, true or false, the Chiefs have the best three players in this game, and then the next 12 to 18 are Eagles. Can't wait for this game. <laughs> uh, did the Chiefs have the three best? Patrick Mahomes, Chris Jones, Travis Kelsey. Mm. Okay. Better than anyone on the Eagles? I don't know. Lane Johnson, Lane. I think I would put him. I mean, A.J. Brown's really f- awesome. A.J. Brown's good. I mean, gosh. You know, I don't know where his health is at right now. I, I have a feeling that A.J. Brown's not totally himself yet. Um, I don't know. I mean, listen, I, I'm definitely going to go with the best player in the game is Mahomes. Gosh. I mean, damn. Am I going to say Chris Jones is the second best player? Okay, I will. But it's not by a lot, no. right? And you know, Kelsey. Okay, yeah. I mean, he might have a point there. It's not. It's not a bad way to think about it. But I, I think he's right. After we get through that right there, we start to go. Damn, Eagle, 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 Chief, Eagle, Chief, Eagle, 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 Eagle. Especially when you look at position to position. I, I think when you go position group, it would probably be more glaring. I mean, hey, I love the Chiefs offensive line, but I'm taking the Eagles, right? Uh. I'm taking the Chiefs quarterback, and I'm taking the Chiefs running backs. Receivers, uh, receivers, and let's include the tight end in that yeah. group. I'm still going to go the Eagles with A.J., Devontae, and, and, and Goddard. Defensive line, it's not a blowout, but I'm taking the Eagles. Linebacker, I'm going to take the Chiefs. Secondary, oof. I'm going to take the Eagles too. It's not a blowout, but yeah. it's, I'm going to take them. So th- there you have it. Yeah, the Eagles – are I said this to somebody on radio last at the end the, the most one of the most well constructed teams I've ever seen there's there's no you know we go through Super Bowl teams they usually have a little bit of a weakness here or there like where like you can an go average position group right which they might have one it might be running back I I think you're right I was about just to go there I go I think that's the only position I look at and if they give Ken- Kenneth Gainwell the ball, it actually I would go. Actually, they're they're better than average. They they, they got to give him the ball more. He's it's like Tony Pollard. It's like hey, I like Miles Sanders, but he ain't Kenneth Gainwell, right? Uh, so that's that's one where yeah, I, I think that kind of says it all right there. Uh, but again, I don't think it's such a disadvantage to where I go. Oh, the Chiefs can't win this game. And again, I think if we went back to the 2019 Super Bowl, we would take more 49ers position groups than Chiefs position groups, right? We would. But that this is where 
We can talk about great quarterbacks and what they can do. Great quarterbacks can cover a few holes for a team and make a lesser team look every bit as good as the team that's actually better because of that position, and that's what can happen in this one. Maybe this will remind us of a similar Super Bowl. You've already conjured some thoughts up on that one. Chiefs Niners back yeah. in the day. Adam Blackall says, what are the similarities between this Super Bowl and Super Bowl LIV? I know yeah. the X's and O's are different, but the Eagles have the roster talent, toughness, and general style that's reminiscent of the 49ers team. I think you you said that exactly yeah. earlier in the pod. Yeah, they do. They do. I think that the, 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 the 49ers front four that year, just the four, damn, that was a special group. I mean, D Ford... Nick Bosa, DeForest Buckner, Eric Armstead. Yeah. Right? I mean, that that's 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 a special group. So, you know, Eagles D line, they do it a little bit more of a different way with a little bit of, hey, yeah, they're awesome up front, don't get me wrong, but also a little creativity in the five man thing. Like with the 49ers, you were like, Do they ever blitz? Do they ever get a fifth guy in there? They don't ever need to, right? So that's where it's a little different. And I also would say that this, as much as that 49ers offensive line was good, they weren't overpowering like this group. They didn't have the size of this group. This is a, this is a must-see of must-sees. They make almost every defense they play look small. And, I mean, even the 49ers, who are, are pretty big up front, and went, right. damn, they're, they're not the size of these guys. I actually turned on the film and was like, can Nick Bosa really push back my lotta? Can he really do that? He could. Yeah, this yeah. just then he could. He's that freaky. But, yeah, that, that's maybe the, the difference I look at there. Adam Blackall has one more thing, too. Oh, I like he it. He goes, oh, just one more thing, Columbo. <laughs> and if you're watching on YouTube or on Peacock right now, we'll show this up here. He goes, uh, and at Fareed, uh, do you deny <laughs> that you've it. been consulting with the Chiefs and you drew up Kelsey's rugby pass? So there's you as Columbo, your face, <laughs> with Columbo's hair and his attire, his jacket, and his... His tie. That's a great show, by uh, the way. Uh, <laughs> Which, by the way, there's a new show on Peacock yeah. called Poker Face. And it's just that like was that? made in kind of the vein of Columbo. Huh. I did not know that. So it's a new show out there. Peacock, sign up for Look it. Four ninety nine. It's actually a very guy. good deal. Best deal in streaming right now. Uh, but yeah, they they did have the rugby play with Travis Kelsey, and I've been a big proponent ever since I've been covering rugby here at NBC. I go, you could use this in the NFL pitch it to a wide receiver of course he fumbled it and it was a bad play and everyone's like never do that again kind of probably ruined it for the next generation yeah but as you mentioned it looked like he was almost attempting or thinking about doing it a couple plays later and he had it and i think and pete echoes these sentiments on defense it could even be more impactful you train a defense after a quick change turnover interception fumble to start doing some you know three-man weave down the field I'm telling you, whoever does this first, whether it's college or NFL. You're saying defense gets a turnover and then they. Defense gets a quick change, turnover, interception, fumble recovery. And they get into something where it's oh, like. It's over. Right. You got five offensive linemen and a quarterback trying to stop that. Yeah, yeah. It's over. Yeah. Please, someone out there have the guts to Good do luck. it. Good luck. Defensive guys will never be able to pull that off. They can't help it. They're going to be like, oh, I'm going for the touchdown. I was supposed to wait for you guys to pitch <laughs> and all that, but I couldn't help it. Yeah. They're, they're too emotional and tense. Uh, <laughs> I do really yeah. think, though, that, and we've seen it a couple of times from yeah. Javis Kelsey specifically. Remember a play a couple of years ago? He pitched it. Gets my Detroit Lions, I think. It he was did. It was down the LaShawn middle, McCoy. and he pitched it to LaShawn McCoy. Right. I, I don't, teams could do that. Well, I know, I know it's like if you mess it up and fumble, and it's, turnovers are so huge in football, but I think you could have a situation where you practice it enough and get good at it where the reward is over the risk. I, I, I honestly think that's what happens with the Chiefs. You know, I do. I don't, I don't, it's not like it is, I don't think it's a design play, but I think they're like, first off, the game's in slow motion because they're so comfortable and having fun, right? They're just because they're good. They're talented. So it's, it's easy. You know, at least compared to most football players or you and me. And then, you know, I think over great repetition and just so much time together that – and they're such junkies. I mean, they're f junkies out there in Kansas City where – I think they just over time were like, hey, man, when Kelsey catches the ball here, like, look at this guy. He's kind of coming up like you could pitch it to him. What would happen? And they did it in practice and they're like, oh, oh, oh. and they just go, hey, let's do it in the game. Who gives a shit? You know, he just missed the flip. He was going to get extra yards. What would have been really interesting is he had the guts to do it the second time that you mentioned, because yeah. if he did it the second time, the guy was going to score. 
McKinnon, but if he pitched it well, right? You know, but he chickened out because he didn't pitch it well, and he didn't want to be Reggie Bush against Texas in the national championship game and go, wait, here we're in a big moment. We just lost the game because I turned it over, right? So that made him chicken out a little bit. But yeah. that's what's awesome about the Chiefs. There's that. They're just like you and me in the backyard going like, hey, let's screw over our kids here and like do the old hook and ladder or whatever. And they just they go out and play and have fun and let it go. And they probably feel like they can do that because if they do screw it up, there's a turnover. They have a good enough offense to get in that position again. I don't think they fear much. Right. Exactly. They have Whereas such if great you're self. Just tooth and nail trying to get everything you can to turn over. Yeah, the Tennessee the Titans aren't thinking about that. Yeah, right. which maybe they should. You know, maybe <laughs> that's, that's the offense where you really should look at it. Yeah. Who knows? Uh, what we will be looking at is what both teams are wearing in the game, too. Yeah. yeah. They call me Big E has tweeted you and said, is Chiefs white-on-white road uniform the hardest unis worn in the Super Bowl? About to be a heater. So this will be the first time the Chiefs wear white jerseys in a Super Bowl since the Super Bowl one loss. And they're definitely going to wear the white pants. Do we know that yet? We We don't don't know. know. I hope so. Man, I love when the Chiefs wear their all-whites. I love it. And I love when they put in the, like, you know, they've had years where they've put in the gray face mask, too. But, like, yeah, this look right here is that, – that, to me, is – oh, man, that would be that Clean. would be awesome. I'm getting hyped up right now just thinking about it. But uh, you do have real grass in Arizona. Yeah. Could get grass stains on it. Okay. That's a problem. Yeah, but it's football. Hard to get white, a grass stain out of white pants. Yeah. I mean, let's start, the, for those start the season there, end the season there. That's, that's just crazy for Kansas that, City. That is right? crazy. You know? That is crazy. Uh, but, yeah, it's – um. It, it's uh, I, I'm, I'm it's cool. I'm always into the uniforms, and I can't wait to look at the field and how it's painted. And I love all of that stuff. But uh, I, I hope they wear the white pants. I really do, because that hasn't that wasn't a thing with the Chiefs forever until the last few years. So from what you've said here today, yeah, and reading through your notes on the championship games, here's my feeling. Yeah, go ahead. I like I to hear. I feel what, like yeah, you've said this. So yeah. I don't even need to guess here. Right. The Eagles are more talented. Right, but. With game planning, with Andy Reid, with Patrick Mahomes, with maybe a doubt whether the Eagles can get lucky or make some plays in the passing game, I think you think the Eagles are better. Yeah, but the Chiefs are going to win. I'm not ready to pick that yet, but yeah, I, I, I I'm you're 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 assessing it the the right way. I, what what could change your mind over this week? If you are leaning that way, health would be a big one for the Chiefs. Yeah, health, of course, is the number one thing. Do all those guys need to be 100% ready to go? I don't know of all of them. Legereus Sneed on defense? Gosh, yeah, they 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 need him. They do. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's it, – Juju and Katerius, Tony, like those are two that I look at to go for sure. They got to be healthy. They can deal – It'd be great if McCole Hardman was ready to go in 100%. I don't know where that's going to go, and he's been dealing with a lingering injury for a long time here in the pelvis thing to make me think it's just not going to get 100% in the next two weeks. But if they can just have Juju and Tony, then with Kelsey and MVS and some Sky Moore, that's enough to go around right there, and that that should be good enough. Um, you know, I I don't know if there's one thing that. At least I can think of the the pull my, you know, brain about this right now. Um, you know, I don't, I don't know if there's anything there that I look at at least right now that I, on the spot that I can come up with. You know, maybe the next pot I'll hit you up with uh, something to go. Oh, I'm a little worried about this as I was thinking about it. But you know, I think the big thing is is like we talked about. It's defense. Chiefs got to change like their defensive fronts. They're going to have to do some stunting up front and create some chaos. If you just play it straight up, they're going to move you out of the way. They're too big and too good, right? You know, they can play man-to-man, but they got to play some zones to where, like we talked about, and kind of play, hey, we're playing zone, but we're ready to help in the run game. You know, and if you do throw the bubble screen out here, okay, I got a guy here that's pretty damn good at you know going to get A.J. Brown in the bubble screen, and he only gets four yards instead of 80 yards. Uh 
those are the things that I, I think are really important in the football game. You know, and then we talked about it. The Chiefs sorting out the blitzes, the five man pressure there. And yeah, just I'm just interested to see if the Eagles what they want to do. Are they gonna really line up because they wanna be in these five man fronts? Are they really gonna do that? Are they gonna come out in the game when the Chiefs line up and getting shotgun and there's three receivers and Kelsey on the field? Are you gonna start the game with five linemen on the field? That's what I want to see. Because that'll be fun. And I don't they've been doing it every game and they find ways to drop sweat or drop Hassan Reddick or do all of that. Uh, but Dan, this is a game too where you go. Oh, I'd like an extra DB in the game against this crew as well. That'll be you know something interesting to watch. Of course, something that everyone will be glued to, football fans and non-football fans alike, yeah. is the halftime show. It's probably the most popular part of the game overall because football fans like the game, but they're also into the. They'll, they'll watch the halftime show, right? We don't turn it off. Definitely not. It's the halftime show, and there are other people who their favorite part is it's, the halftime that's, show. That's all they're there for. So probably the most po- popular part of the we game. Got Rihanna, right? Yeah, Rihanna. Michael C. Vay says, will Rihanna open an umbrella during halftime? It's going off at plus 230 right now. I got to think so. Under my umbrella, 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 a, a, a. Yeah, I got to think that comes out. I think there's got to be multiple umbrellas. But why the... is it at plus 230? Because that would mean Vegas thinks that it's not going to happen. I, well, that's that's scary. You're right. You know, Vegas, Vegas seems to know everything. You're right. So. <laughs> You know, Vegas probably tell us who the top three picks of the draft are next year already. So uh, and they're, they're going to be right. I know, I know. So yeah, I, 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 that would scare me. That would scare me because I would think like Vegas has somebody planted inside of her rehearsals and already knows. You know who probably <laughs> does know our NBC betting analyst Jay Croucher, and he will be on the Wednesday Picks Pod with you. Yep. And Mike Florio. Awesome. Good. Uh, we're going to hit some, you know, Ben MGM parlay previews that we always do. Me and Jay Croucher. He's always got great tidbits as far as how the public and the casinos view the game and things that might have swayed the line and whatever else that way. So uh, I look forward to that for, with Jay Croucher. Uh, I really do. And it, it should be a good week. I'm, a, I'm really excited for this game. You know, again, I think we got yeah. the best team in the NFC against the best team in the AFC. Uh, and, you know, stars and difference makers and great coaches and everything to go along with this. There's really not a storyline I don't like in this football game. And much to the uh, um, difference of what you're seeing with your eyes right now, you're there right now. You are in Arizona as we as we speak. Um, but you're not going to go to the game. I'm not going to go to the game. I was going to stay at the game. The 49ers were in it. I would have because I was already getting, you know, peer pressure from friends and everybody else. Uh, and I would have wanted to stay there and support my friend Kyle yeah. Shanahan. But, no, I'm going to come home hopefully, uh, I think, Friday night. And I'm looking to, yeah, I, you know, just enjoy it. Lots of hors d'oeuvres. Might order some special foods for this one. Oh, okay. You know, maybe some brisket from my favorite barbecue place in Texas. Yes. You know, and do all that. Yes, cry during the announcing of the players and them going to the field. That's that's what I do at the Super Bowl. I can't be around people when I do that. It's bad for my reputation. Yeah, yeah. It, it's going to be... Of of all the Super Bowls we've had here recently, yes, I, I, I do feel like this is the closest to the two best teams. It probably is the two best teams. I, I in think the Super Bowl. I think rarely so. hap- I feel like it rarely happens. It, 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 it it's it's it is rare. I I, I, we should, I would, we should I would agree with it. you there. You know, and and you know, I, I know it's like I saw one question from Rob, like, do you worry about the Chiefs getting overpowered like they did against the Bucks a few years ago in the Super Bowl? No, no, not at all. You know, again, you got to remember both those tackles got hurt in the AFC Championship game, and they weren't a good old line that year, anyways. This is a different Chiefs football team. It's really quite remarkable. You know, it's really remarkable about what both teams have done to their roster in just a year, right? I mean, we started off the show that way. It's just the Chiefs. They were in the AFC Championship game, and it's like half their team's gone, and it's a new team. And a lot of them are young guys. So credit to Andy Reid and Beach that way. And then, of course, Howie Roseman just like, yeah, had a lot of the meat and potatoes, but. You know, got some more of the sizzle that we talk about. Oh, Hassan Reddick. Oh, sizzle. Oh, A.J. Brown, sizzle. Oh, Bradbury, sizzle. And now here they are playing the ultimate sizzle team in the Chiefs in the Super Bowl. Watch Chris with Mike Florio, Pro Football Talk on Peacock every day this week at the Super Bowl. Interviews, talking to players. Do you know who you're talking to yet? I, I don't know, but, I mean, it's – oh, see, look, those, oh, those there are – There he is. There's Last the all-white Super Bowl one. White on white. That wasn't a good showing. They lost to a team wearing a green jersey. Uh-oh. Signs to come. Mahomes, don't smoke any cigarettes at halftime. Yeah. And maybe you'll win. Or drink a uh, McUltra. Fr- what the hell is. is that? Is that a fresca? 
I think a it's a fresco. fresco too. Oh wow, wow! I Look do like that. frescas. I didn't know they were around for that long. But I hope that hit. You know, I hope we hit on all the points. I think we did. I think we did. Again, as you could tell, it's it's the the Chiefs that are going to have to be the ones that are going to have to do a little bit more. And I think the big thing is as crazy as we've talked about the Chiefs changing coverages and doing all that in the last few weeks. And now I'm in a game where I go, hey, you got to change your fronts a little bit here because yeah. of the running ability of the Eagles and all that. So uh, it should be awesome. But please keep sending in questions. Everything we'll try to get do our best to get to them before the big game gets here. You'll be back on Monday. We'll go over the Super Bowl. You know it. My voice will be the same. We will de- we will deliver every game to the homies like we always That's do. That's our promise to you. That's the homie. right. We go you through every it. single game. Not the Pro Bowl flag football game, but. I'll miss you Super Bowl. this week. I'll miss you All too. Right. Next right. year, let's figure out a way to get me in your luggage or suitcase or something like that. Or maybe just NBC can pay for a flight. Maybe that's a, maybe <laughs> we can just do that. All right. Uh, that's, yeah. It seems like an easy fix. Yeah. Okay. Uh, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> All right, everybody. Be good. Enjoy the week. I know I'm excited. Eagles, Chiefs, Super Bowl, showdown. It's going to be amazing. Stay good. Enjoy the games. Have a safe weekend drive responsibly oh, on yes, Sunday please. and let's I think we need to start like our thing again too Monday needs to be a national holiday Monday the day after the Super Bowl these not don't go to work on Monday after the Super Bowl either I'm yeah. telling everybody just listen to our podcast yeah. hang out we'll get there when uh, President's Day falls on Super Bowl uh, Monday and then we'll have after. That Monday off that yes. makes sense all right all right everybody be good peace out enjoy the Super Bowl clap it up Thanks for watching, homies. Hit subscribe to see all my unbuttoned videos. You get to see me, Ahmed Farid, all the big player breakdowns, game breakdowns, player interviews, and my film analysis. So please subscribe. Chris Sims, Unbuttoned. Peace out.